In this video, we'll be talking about using the rack, and I'm starting with an entirely blank rack. There are two devices that we'll never be able to get rid of, the master section device and the hardware interface. The master section on the back of the rack, which we access by pressing tab, has ins and outs for effects send and return, and corresponds to our master in and outs, as well as our control room in and outs for the entire program. The hardware interface has options for our audio in and out, more audio, our big meter, and our advanced MIDI section. I generally keep it on just the big meter so I can use it for monitoring. We change the monitoring modes with this mode switch here and the peak hold mode with this switch here. You'll notice that throughout the rack, there are some wooden slats or seemingly wooden slats. These are grippy little bars that we can use to move around our rack. If we start to add devices, we'll start to see how these work. I'm going to right click anywhere in the empty space on my rack, and I'll choose to create an instrument, a subtractor. Now, in the empty space to the right of my master section, I'm going to create another device. Let's say a guitar amp. Now I can use these wooden handles to scroll up and down or left and right within my rack. I have two available columns that can be any height. You see the screen here to the right is a physical display of my entire rack. If I were to have enough devices to fill this entire column, then you would see that it would be full, and this little blue screen would give us the ability to move around the rack that way as well. This way you have a constant overview of your rack. To create a device in your rack, simply right click anywhere in the empty space and choose the device. Choosing from the instruments dialog, will bring up the default patch for the device. If you wish to choose a different patch, choose the Create Instrument, Create Effect, or Create Audio Track options. I'll choose Create Instrument, and the patch browser comes up. From here, I choose a patch. If I want to add an effect to this patch, I can right-click anywhere on the patch and choose to create an effect. Doing this will cause the effect to automatically be routed in with that instrument I just created we can press tab and double check the routing. We see that the main output of the Maelstrom we just created is connected to the input of this device and the output of that device connected into the inputs on the line six amp we created earlier. If we created an audio track or a mix channel, we could connect the outputs of this line six to the inputs of that channel. Reason Signal Flow is designed to emulate your rack gear. All the sounds start from an instrument and travel out the outputs of that instrument into the inputs of its effect chain or into the mix channel or audio track which is recording it. We'll save the advanced routing for another video and flip back to the front of the rack. Suffice it to say that if you wish to create an instrument that stands alone, click in the empty space of your rack to create your device. If you wish to create an effect hooked up to a particular instrument, Right click on the empty space in that instrument to create the effect auto routed into its chain. Alternatively, you can use the Create dialog next to File and Edit in the Reason menu. Another thing that's important to understand here is the difference in dialog boxes between the Create Instrument and Create Effect functions. So let's right click and choose Create Instrument. We see the same Maelstrom patches that we saw before. If I choose Create Effect, we see a different browser in a different location, and this is looking for effects patches only. We won't be able to find any instrument patches, only effects. We can also move the devices in our rack at any time without changing their routing. Simply click on a single device and drag it using the red guideline to show where it's going to be placed. We can place the subtractor here, grab the pulverizer, throw it over here, whatever we'd like to do. Note that any effect that you pull over into another column will pull that device and its routed signal chain along with it. So we can't just grab this line six amp and throw it by itself since the maelstrom is routed with it. The purpose of the rack is flexibility, so you'll find yourself using it in different ways. Sometimes if I'm working on a track with samples in it, I like to keep all the samples in one column and all the drums and additional instruments in another column. The choice is yours. And now that we know a little more about using the rack, we can look at the next stage of the program using the sequencer. Thanks for watching.